come on in, pull up a chair because the Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer, back once again as your host here at The Daily Dope, presented by TheGamingGang.com. Welcome aboard. Today is Tuesday, December 11th. Got some role-playing game goodness today because I am going to be unboxing and taking a deep dive into Forbidden Lands, the latest role-playing game system from Free League Publishing, which is also... Um, in conjunction with Modifius Entertainment. So that is what I'm going to be digging into today. I also have some tabletop gaming news as well, so that'll be pretty cool. So welcome aboard. If this is your first time visiting, this is a live stream on YouTube. I know a vast majority of people do watch the show long after the fact, but if you are watching live, there is chat available. If you have a question or want to say hello or Maybe you want me to take a peek at something in a little more detail with Forbidden Land. By all means, chime in. I will respond. Chat is not on screen. It's one of the ways that I kind of keep some of the stranger commenters at bay. Anyway, this is episode 209 of The Daily Dope. Yeah, we're closing in on our first year. Pretty sweet. So if you happen to like the video, if you like the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to subscribe. If you like this video, do me a favor, please give me a, a thumbs up. You don't necessarily be giving me a thumbs up. You're just giving the video a thumbs up. All right. Also, going to jump into the news and do want to point out, I know there are a few people out there who watch religiously but do not like the tabletop gaming news segment. If you are one of those people, be sure to just check the show notes. There are timestamps there. You can jump right ahead, right past the news. Speaking of the news, Mantic Games has released a brand new board game based on the Walking Dead comic. Here's the dope on, here's Negan, the board game. Reputation is everything as you experience the untold story of how Negan and the Saviors cleared the sanctuary. Mantic Games has worked once again with Skybound Entertainment to publish a board game inspired by the Walking Dead standalone series, Here's Negan. Comic book fans will have the opportunity to play through a portion of Negan's background that's never been seen before. And here's Negan, the board game. Each player takes on the role of one of Negan's ambitious lieutenants. To win the favor of their despotic leader, Sherry, Dwight, Laura, John, and Tara, must help clear the sanctuary of deadly walkers. However, danger lurks around every corner, and it's not always the walkers that pose the biggest threat. Work together to clear the claustrophobic corridors of the abandoned factory, but that's only part of the mission. You must also do whatever it takes to gain Negan's respect, and players can come out on top by earning the most reputation points. Impress Negan and reap the rewards. Fail and face Lucille's wrath. Here's Negan is a cooperative yet competitive board game for up to five players. Twelve scenarios tell the story of how Negan cleared the sanctuary and went on to become the tyrannical leader of the Saviors. It comes with 19 incredibly detailed pre-assembled plastic miniatures, 16 double-sided game tiles, plus all the dice and tokens replied, replied, required to play. The Walking Dead All Out War Miniatures game is our most successful retail product ever, and we're delighted to be working with Skybound Entertainment to explore this untold chapter of Negan's history said Ronnie Renton, CEO of Mantic Games. Here's Negan is a totally unique game that sees players working together, but also gives them the opportunity to screw over their teammates to impress Negan. It's cooperative and competitive, so you'll need to watch your back. The Walking Dead, Here's Negan the board game, say that five times fast, is for one to five players ages 14 and up, plays in 60 to 90 minutes, and does carry an MSRP of $74.99. It is out now. Yes, it is available right now. I'm sort of curious. Now, I'll be the first to admit, I am not familiar with 
uh, Mantic Games releases up close. I, I've never actually played one. I've seen plenty of news about them. I'm kind of curious if the sculpts for Here's Negan are different than the sculpts for All Out War. Kind of curious. I think that would be kind of cool if they were. Uh, and then again, I wonder if some of the lieutenants of Negan's, like uh, Sherry and Dwight and Tara, I wonder if those miniatures are already in All Out War, if you can kind of port these over. I don't know, but it does sound like a kind of cool game. And I do want to point out, it is based on the comic book, not on the AMC television show. Okay, well, next March, we will see the release of God's Forge from Atlas Games, and I've got the dope. Once Eurythium was plentiful and the land was peaceful, <sighs> now its presence in the world has dwindled, and elite spellcasters battle to control the last place this primal resource can be harnessed, the God's Forge. God's Forge features simultaneous play with each player attacking the players to their left and defending against the player on their right. On a turn, everyone simultaneously rolls four dice. Then each player lays one of their four cards face down in front of them. In any order you want, players reveal those cards, paying the cost of them via specific numbers on rolled dice, the sum of rolled dice, veil stones, or a combination of the above. On the dice, ones can be any number you wish, while an unused six can be spent to acquire a veil stone. Spells provide special one-shot effects, while creations go into play in front of you, but some of them providing one-shot enter play abilities in addition to possible attack and defense values and sacrifice abilities. Once all the cards have been resolved, players assess damage, comparing their attack value against their target's defense. Then you discard any cards you don't want, then refill your hand to four. Once a player is eliminated, everyone still in the game starts taking damage from them each round in order to hasten the end game. God's Forge is for two to four players, ages 14 and up, plays in about 20 to 40 minutes, and will carry an MSRP of $34.95 when it does arrive early next year. Here's the odd thing, though. If you go to the Atlas Games website, there's absolutely no information about this game. And I, I want to say it's a March release, March 2019, if I remember correctly. I'm pretty sure that's uh, that's when it's coming out. So I don't know. I, Atlas Games is kind of kind of odd. They don't really seem to update their website a whole lot. They got plenty of stuff, and they're you know there's new stuff coming out all the time especially for, uh, what is it, Over the Edge, the role-playing game. But for some strange reason, they just, they don't show a whole lot of love for their own website. I don't know. I don't get it. Anyway, let's talk a little bit about gaming magazines, because I happen to be somebody who used to love all the various different gaming magazines. In fact, one of my favorites was um, Shadis. I always pronounce it Shadis, but uh, John Zinzer, who was in charge of that magazine, and uh, also is the uh, the big wig behind AEG, said it was pronounced Shadis. Uh, I was a big Shadis fan. I was a big Different Worlds fan that came out from Chaosium. Well, the latest issue of the Campaigner magazine is now available. And here is the dope on what's inside. In this issue, prepare to steal your nerves against otherworldly terror with the Call of Cthulhu game feature. Mike Mason, who worked on the latest edition, discusses how the game has been updated and modernized. Games aren't just for fun, but can be used for education and training. We talked to Mary Ross Davey from Royal College of Midwives about their new board game training tool, Continuity Counts. PAX Australia was recently held, which featured the brand new PAX Collaboratory. We hear from two of these involved in its creation, Luke Lancaster and Matthew Lee, and discover what the area was all about. Remember the chaos-infested city of Mordheim? Ben Makepeace and Sean, no last name was Sean, Sean must be one of the, uh, the head guys from the magazine, bring the city back to life in the first part of the circus is coming, returning to Mordheim. All this plus more worlds of roleplay, the new community spotlight, articles, news, and more. So basically your contents are the game feature for Call of Cthulhu, World's a role play, not your average ambush. 
Yeah, I like to have uh, pretty unique ambushes in my RPGs. The circus is coming, returning to Mordheim. The PAX Collaboratory. Community Spotlight on G3 Gamers. Continuity Counts. Chase the Dragon. Those are both interviews. Terraforming Earth. Not Terraforming Mars, but Terraform. Terraforming Earth. And that is a pretty, pretty jam-packed uh, agenda there for the Campaigner Magazine. You can score issue 26 digitally as a pay-what-you-want with a recommended dollar fee. Or you can also receive the magazine in print for $9.90. Not $9.99. $9.90. So be sure to check this out. This looks like a, a pretty interesting gaming magazine. Looks like it's heavier towards um, RPGs. It might be simply about RPGs. But uh, they, they are talking about, like, PAX Australia. So I think that would have had some board games there. But interesting. Pretty cool. Continuity counts, huh? So uh, it's a college of... The Royal College of Midwives. Hmm. wonder what that'll be all about. I'll have to take a peek. I'll have to uh, actually uh, pick up this magazine and uh, give it a read digitally. Speaking of digital products, a new RPG from Sage Games, Spaceships and Space Worms, is now available in PDF at Drive Through RPG. And here's the dope. A wiry human woman guns the throttle of a contraband military vessel while navigating through an asteroid field. Her co-pilot, a round squat creature with one eye on a long stalk, gleefully fires the ship's plasma cannon at the pursuing bounty hunters. A gnarled hunk of meteorite lays in the hold. It pulses with the ultraviolet glow of dark matter magic. A vaguely humanoid android snaps a jeweler's monocle into place on their optical sensor to get a closer look as a feline man takes a wrench to the smoking engine room. Hopefully to repair it, not to, like, smash it. This vignette is a glimpse into one of the many space adventures that you can bring to your table with spaceships and star worms. Oh, it's star worms. I thought it was space worms. It's star worms. Sorry about that. SNS is a comprehensive fifth edition supplement that gives you nearly 400 pages of science fiction flavor and rules to transform your 5e experience. Supplement includes 13 playable species, five new classes, two augmented classes, Archetypes for bards, fighters, rogues, paladins, and sorcerers. 16 new backgrounds, new equipment, including armor, weapons, and vehicles. Old chapter on spaceships and spaceship combat. Hacking rules. New cover rules. Environmental rules for zero gravity, radiation, and more. New monsters, including robots, abominations, and star worms. A brand new setting to play in, as well as a custom character sheet. The SNS, and I said SNS, not SNM. Core Sourcebook provides everything you need to play and run all sorts of science fiction adventures, from space operas to cyberpunk runs to exploration missions and everything in between. So buckle up spacers and get ready to dive in at warp speed. You can score the 376-page Spaceships and Star Worms Sourcebook for an even $20 at drive through RPG. Sounds kind of interesting. Uh, I like uh, some of the hacks that I've seen for for 5th edition that aren't necessarily just uh, fantasy related. Although, strangely enough, they're talking about uh, archetypes for bards and rogues and paladins and that. So it seems like this uh, this might not be a complete like science fiction. This might be, might be more like um, space slash fantasy uh, as far as the setting, but could be pretty cool. Hey, since I'm talking about a 5th edition supplement, how about uh, some news from Dungeons & Dragons itself? That's because the latest issue of Dragon Plus is out. And some of the highlights are coverage of the 2018 D&D Extra Life charity streams. Yes, they had a few different streams. There's also a holiday gift guide for D&D fans everywhere. A really interesting article about Dots RPG and their work to bring D&D and the fun of role-playing to visually impaired gamers. A look at some classic issues of the original Dragon, as well as a Best of the DM Guild 
including a Q&A with author Ashley Warren about the uh, D&D adventures that she has written, including her latest set in Waterdeep, Winter's Splendor. You can even follow the link from Dragon Plus in order to score the 26-page adventure absolutely free. I do want to point out the adventure is actually, I think it's like $4.99 on DM's Guild, so pretty cool that you can just by reading Dragon Plus score that adventure absolutely free. I have to say, Ashley Warren, Warren, Warren duh, Ashley Warren, I believe is the name, is making quite a name for herself. She's got the uh, the Ring of the Battle Maiden, the Executioner's Daughter. Uh, a lot of fifth edition fans probably already recognize the name from uh, Morden Kanan's Lost Notebook. So uh, she is uh, she is doing some really cool stuff for DMs Guild. And uh, let's be honest, a lot of the stuff on DMs Guild is kind of crappy. But as far as I understand, Ashley Warren stuff is not. It is very, very good stuff. So definitely check out the new issue of Dragon Plus and score that free 5th edition adventure while you're at it. All right, so that's it for today's na uh, news. Bah, why am I tongue-tied tonight? What is going on here? I wonder if it's uh, because I came running down here about 20 minutes before the show was going to start to do all my stuff. So thankfully, amazingly enough, all the all the slides and the images were all in place. Nothing was messed up there. Uh, check the sound real quick. Seemed like everything was in sync. Because you never know. You know, I can go couple of weeks and the sound is fantastic and everything's in sync and then suddenly whap, I'm SOL and uh, the sound is all messed up. One thing I did not do is I did not put my uh, my upcoming games in the correct order here so that's what I'm kind of sorting through at the moment. But anyway, uh, pretty pretty big show today. I wanted, I wanted to kind of zip through the news pretty quickly because there are two hardcover books and a booklet in here, and then there's a big map uh, in this box set. This looks really sweet. I have been kind of peeking at the uh, the PDFs a little bit that um, I, I believe her name is Bowel, B-O-E-L, with uh, Free League. She's super, super nice. She's my contact with them. And uh, she'd actually sent the box set, but in the meantime, she's like, hey, you know, here's here's a set of uh, PDFs to uh, familiar, familiarize yourself a little bit with the game. I've only taken a little bit of a peek, but uh, I am going to reach out and see if I might be able to do some giveaways for PDFs for Forbidden Lands. So uh, worst comes to worst, I will certainly uh, present a lucky winner with my PDFs because having the physical books, I don't really need the PDFs, right? So I am. Uh, I will check with Bowel on that. I got. I hope I'm. I'm hope I'm pronouncing the name correctly. Uh, I know she's out of the office right now. That's why I can't say. Oh yeah, hey, I'm gonna have some some giveaways. So anyway, before I jump into that, uh, just to tell you what's cooking on uh, episodes of the Daily Dope throughout the week. Tomorrow, normally I do war games on Wednesdays, but I don't have anything that's really popping right now. I mean, I've got got some GMT. Um, like up upgrade packages that we I can take a look at. I've got the fire in the lake one uh, that I could kind of look at, but I prefer like new stuff, right? So uh, and I might have some stuff coming from uh, Tiny Battle Publishing uh, in the near future. But in the meantime, I think I'll take a pass on doing a war game this week, and I will actually share. Yes, that's right. The fourth edition of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay from my good friends over at Cubicle 7 Entertainment, as well as, obviously enough, Games Workshop, right? So, yes, this is the actual physical book. So tomorrow, we are going to dive in. So we're pretty heavy on RPG stuff this week. Uh, and in fact, I just got the uh, the big core book for... Uh, the pronoun I think it's pronounced Coriolis... The science fiction game that is also from <laughs> Three League Publishing. So that just showed up in today's mail. 
So that'll be, uh, we'll be taking a look at that next week. All right, so anyway, so uh, Warhammer, Fantasy, uh, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. Come on, Jeff, it's only English. That's on tomorrow's show. Thursday, I am going to review the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica for Dungeons and Dragons. Give you a little bit of hint. Uh, this is going to be along the lines of my thoughts on Dungeon of the Mad Mage. It's not going to be for everyone. Um, in fact, I'm not even, well, I'm not sure why. Well, okay. I know why uh, Wizards of the Coast decided to go with this as opposed to some other setting book uh, for, for something that, you know, is from the, you know, years and years and years, the decades of Dungeons and Dragons. But um, I don't know. Uh, I'll talk about it in my review. Then on Friday, I am going to crack open the core box, the core game for Mystic Veil vale from AG. Yes, I'm finally getting a chance to take a look at this. If you follow the show, you know I have actually uh, dived into some of the expansions for Mystic Veil, vale, but have never actually played because I didn't have the core game. Then on Monday, a bit of a, kind of a family fun D&D night because we're going to take a look at the ABCs of D&D written by Ivan Van Norman. These are from Hunter's Entertainment, the one, two, threes of D&D. And then the new card game, Dungeon Mayhem, which is also a Dungeons and Dragons title. So this will be, I'll take a look at all three of these on Monday. Uh, next week, I also have um, a last minute gift giving guide i'm gonna make some recommendations and then on christmas eve i might actually shoot the show early on christmas eve but i am going to reveal my top games of 2018 my favorite games of 2018 i'm gonna reveal my number one favorite game of this past year so not too not too shabby you got a lot of stuff cooking and uh, there's always stuff popping up in the mail too so I've got some other reviews that are kind of cooking. So without further ado, I know folks are tuning in because they want to see exactly what is this Forbidden Lands from Free League Publishing as well as Modifius Entertainment. It is written by, and I know I'm going to get these names all incorrect, Tomas Hirensam, uh, Eric Granstrom, Christian Granith, Nils Carlin, and Costa Custolis. Custolis? Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. With artwork provided by Nils Gullickson, Simon uh, Stalinhog of um, Tales from Loop fame, right? Tales from the Flood, too, right? Pretty sure, pretty sure that's Simon stuff. And Nicholas Brandt, the combined 472 pages of RPG goodness is available in this box set behind me for $49.99 or $45.80 if you go directly to the Free League website and order. Or you can also pick it up in PDF from my friends over at Drive-Thru RPG for $24.99. Before I jump into opening up the box, I do want to point out whenever I talk about Drive-Thru RPG, I do want to mention that the gaming gang and thus, of course, the Daily Dope, are affiliates of the drive through website. So if you are going to a drive through website, please do me a favor. Stop by thegaminggang.com first. Click on one of our banners. That way, if you happen to make a purchase at the drive through sites, you get a small portion of that sale. And I mean, it's not, we're not talking huge amount, and it's not making it any more expensive for you to purchase your PDFs, your, your digital products, but you would be amazed. All those dimes and quarters and 50 cents all really add up and really help out every month. Most of the time, that pays for uh, our rather pricey hosting for the gaming gang. All right, so without further ado, I know it's like, come on, Jeff, get into Forbidden Lands. Let's see this. All right, so here we go. Uh, I'm going to jump in here. I'm going to reload my uh, Diet Coke. I almost said Diet Pepsi for a second. It's Diet Coke tonight. Uh, so it is Forbidden Lands, Rogues and Raiders in a Cursed World. So 
as I mentioned, I have kind of peeked a little bit at the PDFs. I haven't gotten super far. Uh, I took a little bit of a look at the, the player's guide that's in here. The uh, player's manual, I guess, is what it's actually termed, as well as the Game Master's Guide, uh, the PDFs. I have not looked at the adventure PDF or the map or anything like that. So it says, round the beggar from Verasa all sat in a ring, and by the campfire they sat and heard his song about walkers and wolfkin and every terrible thing. And his, excuse me, and of his fear he sang to them all night long. There is something beyond the mountains, beyond the howls, beyond the mist. There is something behind the veils, behind hearts cold as stone. Harkin, something walks and whispers, walks and lures you in and whimpers. Come to us, for this earth shall ever be ours and ours alone. <sighs> Vin Lands is new take on classic fantasy role playing. In this sandbox survival role playing game, you're not heroes sent on missions dictated by others. Instead, you are raiders and rogues bent on making your own mark on a cursed world. You will discover lost tombs, fight terrible monsters, wander the wild lands, and if you live long enough, build your own stronghold to defend. Contents of the box set, hardcover player's manual with faux leather covers, including rules for fast character generation, visceral combat, lethal magic, dangerous journeys, and for building your own stronghold, easily ported to other game worlds. Uh, strangely enough, it says easily be ported to other game worlds. That, for some reason, just doesn't doesn't jive with me. I have to point out, I do believe this is originally available in Swedish because uh, Free League is a Swedish company. So uh, I, think, I, I think they're out of Stockholm. I'm, well, I mean, I guess, yeah, isn't that like the only city I probably know of in Sweden? Yeah, probably. I don't remember the city that the Tales from the Loop takes place in. So, yeah. Uh, anyhow, there's also the hardcover Game Master's Guide with faux leather covers, including a rich and detailed description of the Forbidden Land setting, a large illustrated bestiary, and yes, I guess it really is pronounced bestiary. Uh, I have always, for years, forever, I thought it was called a bestiary because... It's monsters and beasts in it, but uh, I guess it is supposed to be pronounced bestiary. Extensive random encounters and three complete adventure sites. A Legends and Adventures booklet that lets you flesh out your characters and give them unique backgrounds. Oh, here I thought that was like an adventure book. A large full color map that gives you the freedom to explore the Forbidden Lands any way you want, hex by hex, as well as a sheet of stickers for adventure sites and gravestones transforming the game map to a living permanent record of your adventures, almost along the lines of um, kind of a, a legacy game, right? Which I have to laugh. All role-playing games are legacy games, right? What you do now affects future games. All right, so let's crack this on open. Now, I do believe that there is also, I want to say it's, I think it's 200 pages. There is a campaign book. Uh, which is not part of this box set. But let's uh, let's jump on in here. Here's the Game Master's Guide. We'll look at that second. We're going to look at the Player's Handbook first. Wow, these are really nice. I tell you that right now, these are really, really nice looking. Okay, so here's the booklet, The Legends and Adventures. Oh, it's Adventurers. Sorry, Legends and Adventurers. Got the map, the hex map, and then we've got sheet of stickers all right so taking a look at the stickers here weird stickers actually uh have a bit of a a finish to them so let's see, it looks like weatherstone hackler's house eye of the rose is a little difficult to kind of read these let's see i'm gonna pull this up a little closer here um, this, uh, this camera here does not auto-focus, so that's why I'm not going to go, oh, yeah, look at this, because it's, uh, it's probably going to be fairly, um, fuzzy. So, 
Graveyard of Thunder, and I'm wearing reading specs, but then again, it's not like I'm right on top of it looking at it. I mean, I'm kind of holding it a few feet from my face here. Cool. Hollows, Ravenhold. Nice. So those are the stickers. We'll take a look at the map in just a second. Well, not a second, in a few moments. So let's move these over to the side. I move the Game Master's book over to the side. Let's take a look at the player's handbook. So, uh, as we see with a lot of these European books, you know what? I am going to adjust this. Uh, let's see if we can kind of get in a little closer. Let's uh, try to zoom in a little bit. Closer in. Let's take me a second here. All right, come on. Wow, that's as close in as we're going to get. Yeah. All righty. No, that's okay. It's not. That's it's all right. At least it's not getting cut off by uh, my mug up in the uh, up, upper left corner there. All right, so we got a bit of a map of the Forbidden Lands here. That game concept. Uh, I want to point out that I really, really dig the artwork. Uh, the artwork in that I've seen so far looking through really does have that old school vibe to it. I gotta be honest. I have not gotten into the mechanics of the game yet. Really like in depth. I, I have taken a peek at the mechanics to it, but, um, it, it's, it's kind of OSR and not OSR. So, uh, it, it doesn't have a whole lot of, lot of, uh, you know, original D and D, uh, or, you know, uh, which a lot of OSR games to really be considered old school renaissance or old school revival, whatever you want to consider the R to be, um, usually have to kind of be based on original D&D or at least, you know, uh, advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, it can be basic. It can be expert. It can be a D and D. Uh, it can be, it can be white box, brown box, uh, and that can be considered OSR. Some people also look at OSR as just kind of the vibe you get for the adventuring, where it's uh, it's more based on the skills of the players as opposed to the skills of the characters. So, but as I was saying, I I dig the artwork. The artwork really has that really nice kind of old school vibe to it um even like uh like the larry elmore uh pen and ink art that we used to see uh in a lot of stuff well, i know a lot of people who are familiar with uh dungeons and dragons and larry elmore's fantasy work and that know more about his uh his like his paintings and that but he did a lot of uh pen and ink artwork in fact could have swore he's he just did some pen and ink art for a new RPG that came out or a recent RPG off the top of my head. I can't remember what the RPG is though. Don't know. Uh, but I think it, I think it is an old school role playing game too. All right, so we got talking about the dice. So this uses six sided dice. So you got six sided dice, you've got eight sided dice, you got 10 sided dice and 12 sided dice. And for the most part, you're rolling uh, a lot of D6s. And there's also a D66, which you have two different colored uh, six sided dice. Let's say you got red and white and you say, okay, well, red is the tens, white is the, the single digits. So when you roll dice, you read it as 11 to 66. Uh, I have also seen it where you not in this game, but where you would roll two dice and uh, the lower number is first. So you wouldn't have like a 41 because if you rolled a four and a one, it'd be a 14. So a little uh, little different on uh, some of this usage of the six sided dice. Talking about typical game session, talking about she and he, because throughout the book they refer to NPCs as he, and they refer to the game master as well as the uh, player characters as she. I don't know. It's to me, I think people make a bigger deal about 
the whole usage of he, she in some of these role playing game products than, than are necessary. I mean, you know, I, I don't get really upset if they refer to all of the, the characters in that, the players in the game master is she. It doesn't bug me. I do know there are some folks out there who it does bother bothers quite a bit all right so talking about uh character creation we're seeing the different we got the human we got the half elf we got the dwarf uh halfling isn't this the elf right here that's an image of the elf right oh yeah here's the elf she's the half elf uh, there's halflings, so, you know, pretty much your standard fantasy roleplay races so far, right? Then we got Wolfkin. Then we got Goblins. That Goblin looks a lot like uh, the Goblins from Ralph Bakshi's Wizards. It wasn't an orc. I'm trying to remember if they were Goblins or Orcs, or maybe they were both. That does kind of have a, one of the Goblin vibe from that. So we've got the goblins here, we got druids. So as opposed to like a lot of the old school, uh, there's orcs too, but they guess, yeah, that is a picture of an orc. That is the goblin there. Uh, as opposed to a lot of the uh, old school where your, <clears throat> your fantasy race was actually your character class. Uh, this does not fall into that. Forbidden Lands does not do that. I, I gotta be honest, I was never... I was never a fan of that for some reason, where it was like, well, you know, you're a dwarf, so your dwarf is like this, because all dwarves are like this, and that's what you get to play. I just thought that was a little odd. Uh, I do understand it. Yeah, I kind of get it. But uh, it just wasn't something that ever jumped out to me. Uh, so then we've got the profession. So we've got the druid, we got the fighter, Got the hunter, minstrel, peddler, rider, rogue, sorcerer. So those are the professions. Then we have age, attributes, and there are four attributes that are uh, in this game. So we've got strength, agility, wits, and empathy. So, uh, and also you're going to assign attribute points got some skills there are not tons and tons of skills you have talents uh you have a pride you have something that's uh, like your your pride and joy in life uh and i thought i found it kind of interesting because uh as i was reading through here it's like uh, you can kind of push your luck on your die rolls but then if you like utilize your pride which allows you to roll like a d12 which is like the best die in the game uh any if you still fail then you lose that pride. Then it's gone. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Then we got uh, kind of an example of the character sheet. So got that. I know your dark secret, something that uh, is special about, uh, about your character. The premise of the game, and I, of course I haven't read a whole ton about the background in that, the background story, but it's supposed to be that, uh, that this world has been... Um, pretty much under the the thumb of these demons or or something and and there's this like this like mist this fog at night that kind of like this red mist that surrounds everything uh that uh, if you travel out into the mist you're more than likely never going to return so uh your all your characters are basically uh from like a village right and uh, this this mist has has disappeared, and now finally people are starting to kind of you know poke their heads out from their villages and that, and uh, they're going to go out and kind of explore this kind of new world because for generations this mist has prevented you know the different towns and villages and that from actually communicating with you, with each other much. So, uh, kind of cool. So, uh, talking about consumables, appearance, name, experience, developing your character, your reputation. 
because things that you do, your reputation will follow you, both good and bad. We're talking about the skills, rolling the dice for the skills. So what you're really basically doing is you're rolling your six-sided dice for the most part. And you're looking for uh, sixes because a six is a success. Uh, a one is a failure. So they're talking about uh, when you have uh, your, your skill and your attribute is going to determine how many dice you're going to get to roll for any kind of contested skill or attribute roll or things like that. And uh, the number of dice that you roll, obviously, are going to improve your situation as far as um, success. So even here, it's showing number of dice. What's your chance of success just on, you know, like I always like to say it, come out roll, like, you know, like craps. Uh, on your first roll, what is your chance of success? And if you try to push your luck, what are your chances for success? So you can push your luck uh, because even though if you roll ones on your first roll, ones just aren't successes, that's all. Uh, but if you push your luck and you roll, you can't re-roll sixes or ones. If I remember correctly from what I was taking a peek at, um, you can roll all your other dice. Thing is, if you fail pushing your luck, then those ones will count as something bad, not just, well, you didn't succeed, but you not only succeeded, and then this happened. So we got opposed rolls, we got NPCs and skills, talking about the skills, the artifact dice. I thought this is kind of cool too, where um, different gear and different things that you find give you these dice. So like if it's a D8, it's mighty. If it's a D10, it's epic. If it's a D12, it's legendary. And uh, by using these these uh, powerful artifacts or pieces of gear, they're uh, they're basically giving you an extra die that you're going to roll for your successes. And so, for an example, if it's a D8, remember on that six-sided die, any six is a success. Well, on a D8, any roll of six or higher is a success. And depending on the die, and depending on how high you roll, you may get more than one success. And of course, uh, I have not gotten to this point, but I'm going to assume that the number of successes will determine the quality of your success. How successful were you? Did you did you go like above and beyond? So we've got some skills. There aren't a ton of them. Healing, performance. We've got animal handling, marksmanship, lore, survival, uh, move. I think there, it looked like there were maybe about 14, 16 skills. So not tons and tons of stuff. Then you got talents, which are uh, a little bit different. You have talents based on your kin, which your kin is your race. A lot of, uh, a lot of game companies are trying to kind of get away from utilizing the word race, which I understand that. There you go, nice little uh, bookmark here. Pretty sweet, very cool. So showing a list of talents. So we've got kin talents. We've got talents based on your profession. We've got general talents. So quite a few of these. Looks like maybe about 30 of these. And we're going to go into a bit of detail about each of these. So, so far we're seeing a lot of stuff that's pretty much dedicated to uh, the characters. Of course, it is the, uh, it's the player's manual. So obviously it would be doing that. So it's kind of talking about these talents and the different ranks of these talents and what you're able to do. Now we got combat and damage, rounds and initiative, drawing the initiative, rounds and turns. Uh, there are some card decks that are available for forbidden lands. I don't really know much about them. I got to be honest, I am one of these people who is not necessarily a big fan of um, gamers having to go and purchase a lot of these like extra like accruements, I guess we would say, uh, to be able to play. I've never been a big fan of like having a bunch of like card decks or, or decks of different items, depending on the adventure people are playing and stuff. To me, that's a little, I mean, they're cool. They look kind of cool. I like the artwork and stuff, but to me, it's just, 
It's just a little too much of a cash grab. Now, I'm not saying that that's what's going on here because they are optional, but uh, they are talking about uh, the, uh, the custom card deck. So uh, we've got different actions, slow actions and fast actions. Talking about slow action, talking about fast action, zones and ranges. So uh, talking about range categories, arms length, near, short, long, distance, or I should say distant, fleeing, ambushes and sneak attacks, close combat. If this is, uh, if this does have kind of an old school flair to it, um, flavor, I guess we'll say to it, then uh, combat should be pretty deadly, is what I would assume. Talking about ranged combat, social conflict. Go. Talking about weapons. So we got a few different weapons here. Hey, there we go. I, I dig when we see something like this. I always like when a company includes some images of what these weapons look like. Because I have said umpteen times that growing up, I did not know what the difference between a Morning Star and a Flail was. So, or I, I'm sorry, a Mace. Morningstar and Flail. I mean, they're all kind of like crushing weapons. But there is a difference. So, then we got damage. There we go. Now we're showing some of the uh, some of the armor. Ah, so we do have plate armor in this. Critical injuries. Conditions. Hungry, thirsty, sleepy, and cold. Fear. Falling, drowning, poison. Disease, riding animals. And we got magic. So, uh, I am not sure. Okay, so sorcerers and druids. Looks like those are the characters who can utilize spells. Well, it says the magic users of the Forbidden Lands are a diverse group of individuals, including both sorcerers and druids. So, I don't know. I don't know if other characters can utilize any magic at all. Or if it's pretty much, as far as the player characters go, if it's just simply the uh, the druid and the uh, the sorcerer, that healing, shape shifting, awareness, symbolism, stone song. It looks as if uh, the magic users have to kind of kind of it looks like they have to sort of choose a school or schools of magic. Death magic. I'm going to take a guess. That's probably what you're going to run across NPCs having. Maybe not. And okay, now we've got the journeys. So we're talking about the map types of terrain. Quarters of the day, morning, day, evening, night. And during journeys, the day is divided into four quarter days. Use the measure time in the game. Uh, there's a bit of a hex crawl element to this, I do believe. Leading the way, we've got some uh, mishaps, some random tables here, keeping watch, foraging, hunting, fishing, making camp, resting, sleeping. Go to sleep, exploring, and then sea travel. Now, the stronghold. So here's another aspect uh, I like to see role-playing games get into. And, uh, oh gosh, which one is it? It's a it's an OSR game. Is it Swords and Wizardry? No, it's not Swords and Wizardry. It's, um, is it Adventure, Adventures of the Conqueror King or something like that? Uh, that focuses on when the characters get higher levels that they actually become landholders like, you know, barons or earls or lords or whatever. Now, granted, we see that in a lot of different role-playing games. I mean, it, that aspect's been in Dungeons & Dragons forever. But the thing is, it's never really been dealt with in depth like uh, like some of the old-school uh, some of the OSR games out there lately have. So I'm I'm 
I'm happy to see the stronghold uh, because also you got to figure there are a lot of a lot of gamers out there who really dig uh, things like Fallout and having their you know having their their stronghold in that um, games like uh, Ark where you know they have their you know their home base so that's kind of cool so stronghold flaws functions and hirelings oh master builder there you go that's cool keeping watch upkeep functions bakery dungeon forge gallows library guard tower oh, that's pretty wild uh so this this would also give players after a certain amount of time obviously they're not gonna just be starting characters going out there and being like okay well let's build a stronghold uh but it actually gives them, you know, and of course the game master as well, some cool ideas of what that you could add to the stronghold itself. Like most people wouldn't think right off the top of their head tanneries, but you would see in a medieval town or a keep, I guess we'll, see, we'll use the term keep, you would have probably had a tannery. You would have had training grounds for, uh, for the men at arms. We're talking about hirelings. Now, I think these hirelings are more, yeah, these are more in tune with your characters who are working at your stronghold. Events at the stronghold, battles at the stronghold. Very cool. Very nice. Then we got some trade goods. More trade goods. We've got just a bunch of different items. We've got uh, the melee weapons, ranged weapons. Oh, it's, uh, looks like it's talking about how long it takes to create these. That's very possible. Maybe that's what these are. Maybe this is, this is basically saying how long it takes to, uh, to build these, to, to make these. Well, no, now we, now we're seeing critical injuries, critical injury wounds. That's kind of cool. Critical injuries, horror. And then we've got the, uh, the it's a pretty cool looking kind of old style character sheet. I, I like that. That's cool. But that is, that is very nice. And of course, they are available for you to download. <laughs> You're not going to have to rip them out of the book here. All right. Now we got a cool index and that came out to 208 pages. So that is the player's ma uh, manual, I think it was. Uh, no, it says player's handbook here. Didn't it say player manual on the back? Yeah, it says player's manual on the back. Here it says player's handbook, which is, you know, sounds <laughs> more like it, right? Okay, so we've got the Game Master's Guide here. Uh, and, whoops. Out there, how many pages we got here? 264. All right, so... Let's just kind of take a peek through here. So we got a uh, game master. We've got, oh, cool. We're going to have a history of the land here, of the forbidden lands. Uh, this does have a, a kind of a unique uh, backstory to it. I like that because uh, it's it seems like a, a really nice way to kind of introduce your players to the game and, and kind of give them a... Uh, Kind of a hook right because i i can't I, I it drives me nuts when i see these really terrible uh adventure hooks right uh for different you know published adventures that are out there in that and it's funny because i always get a kick out of alkyr stuff where it's like uh so do you want to play D D tonight well, that's why you're there you're there to play dungeons and dragons right so don't make the hook where it's like oh well you know it's like oh i'm practically begging you to play it's just like, boom, throw the players in it. Let's go. All right, so we got the history here. Talking about the background. Looks as if like we got uh, kind of a detailed history for almost a thousand years right now, it looks like. Yeah, well, oh, 1165 years is the kind of the history that we see there. Talks about the Gons. 
gods of the land. Rust Rust Brothers are uh I believe the Rust Brothers are sort of like uh like a, a villainous organization. It's not like a group of brothers. It's I think they're just called uh the the group is called Rust Brothers. You're talking about different kin. We got a map here. Uh, the map's kind of showing what uh, what kin is located where, right? So, seeing elves, ogres, orcs. Um, the background for the orcs here are the backgrounds uh, where the orcs were actually want to say they were servants of the elves, as well as some humans. And during this uh, this big battle against evil, uh, the elves kind of uh, realized, Ooh, well, we're not going to win this, so uh, let's just leave the orcs to their own, uh, you know, their own fate, and let's get at them. It's kind of what I was getting uh, the gist from. I might be wrong. We got ogres, we got the orcs, the wolfkin, Sorin. So those are like lizard men. Whiners, not sure what those are. Halflings and goblins. All right, and then we got the bestiary. Up through here. The abyss worm. Bloodling. Demon. So, uh, various different demons. So it looks like you can kind of, kind of roll on that. Got a death knight. Dragons. Drake worm. An ent. I wonder if they're villainous or good. Ghosts, giants, giant squid. So I, I want to point out that Forbidden Lands actually was kickstarted by Free League, and it did really, really well. So I'm wondering um, the amount of support that we're going to see for this game. Now, I have to say that this box set for 50 bucks, this is really, this is nice. These are really nice books. Um, the Harpies, Hydra. Uh, I'm just curious what uh, what they've got up their sleeves, you know? Um, Free League is not a company that releases, like, no one will ever mistake Free League for Paizo. You don't see tons and tons of releases constantly coming from Free League. Uh, but that's not to say that they don't have a bunch of stuff kind of in the hopper coming down the pike or Forbidden Lands. Because one of the aspects that I did notice, uh, and it even mentioned it on the back of the box, is that uh, this game is designed to be easily kind of ported over to any kind of fantasy setting that you want. So I would take a stab that uh, there's more, more coming on the horizon. Now, as I mentioned, there is that 200 page um, kind of a, like campaign book. But I think I think that's out now. I know it's available in PDF different items here, some different kind of magical items. Now we talk about encounters. There you go, the blood mist. The blood mist is what surrounded, you know, it would just settle in as the sun went down, it would settle in and it, it basically would kill people who were out in it. We're talking about different encounters. So we got some random encounters here. I uh, gotta point out, okay, so I have never I've never really run hex crawls. I mean, I've played stuff that's sort of like hex crawls, like the really old Barbarian Prince game, which came out when I was probably, I don't know, 13. And it was actually very cool. Uh, it was kind of hex crawl slash create your own adventure sort of game. But um, I have never actually run as an adult uh, any kind of a hex crawl game. Uh, I don't know. I just. Some people dig it, some people don't. I The randomness of it is what kind of deters me. But uh, I don't know, this is looking kind of cool. With all the various different encounters here. 
Restless Dead. All right, so then we got the adventure sites. So the adventure sites are, I believe, what we saw those uh, stickers that go on the map for. So we got creating adventure sites. So we've got more, uh, more charts. Yeah, so it's, I mean, it's possible that uh, there's some really good nuggets in this that uh, game masters could, could draw from. Because uh, I've said it all the time. I like to kish, kit, kit, kitch. No, Jeff, not kitch. Kit bash. I like to kit bash uh, my uh, my role playing games. I think I think the only RPG that I've run almost out of the box, not completely out of the box. I have changed some things over the years running it. Obviously enough, it's called Cthulhu. Call Cthulhu. I have probably run that as close to the actual rules themselves than any other game I've ever run. But then again. There's a lot that I change from, from just the core rules in, in Call of Cthulhu. And every every edition, even the latest, even the latest edition. So I have treasure and finds. So I've got a lot of different uh, charts in here. And I know that is one of the things with uh, a lot of OSR games, too, is there's there's a lot of just sandboxiness with uh, a lot of charts and stuff like that. So we've got the Hollows, which is type of an adventure site. It is a village. So kind of giving us an idea of that. Got a little map of the hollows as well. So rather than us uh, seeing like a, you know, starting adventure, it's like we're going to have uh, three adventure sites. See Rust Brothers Durkas. So as I mentioned, the, the Rust Brothers aren't like just, you know, a, a band of <laughs> relatives roaming around village idiots it's probably not the not an idiot at all the beer war there we go and now we got weatherstone which is a castle adventure getting there locations that's cool showing some artwork there It's like we, we're dealing with undead here. Got some characters. Talking about some events. That looks like a harpy. Veil of the Dead. It's a dungeon style adventure. Hey, let's see what the dungeon looks like. Dungeon style. I mean, from what I saw of like the, the core rules of this, this would be, if you're looking for like a really rules light kind of uh game to uh to take a lot of you know basic D D or a D D adventures and kind of uh port them over this looks like you could do it uh it doesn't look like uh oh, granted it's a dungeon adventure but not seeing any big like map or anything like that and these are what are we looking at here at the at the end here it's look like these are items treasures maybe well of tears maybe these are now uh, these handouts they'd be numbered if they had handouts maybe they are handouts because the one adventures site is the hollows then we've got weatherstone and then we got veil of the dead so maybe those actually are handouts for the players all right and then we got the index and then another map so very nice very very well put together books with the faux leather <laughs> all right so lastly let's take a look at the legends and adventurers booklet and we're going to take a look at the map as well so legends and adventurers it says this booklet lets you flesh out your player characters and give them unique backstories with a few dice rolls booklet also contains random tables for create, creating dramatic legends and dangerous monsters in the forbidden lands okay so once again we've got uh, some more random generation tables so we got some backstories here so if you want to roll up you know the your kin you can you can just simply roll some dice and it's like okay well you're gonna be human you're gonna be a halfling 
So uh, there are different uh, different humans. So childhood. So I always like um, like role playing games, like even fantasy role playing games, and that where when you're creating your character, you actually have a, a profession that that character had before they became an adventurer. Because it, it isn't as if, you know, they were adventurers straight from the womb. You know, well, you know, you were 13 years old and became an adventurer. Uh, I, I kind of like that. Although, you know, a lot of times you're rolling on these tables and it's like, oh, well, yeah, you are an orphan. So you have kind of been an adventurer all your life. Uh, so formative events. Okay, so we've got childhoods. Then we got formative events. So we got a few of those. Uh, how did the group meet? Is that how this is looking? Yeah, looks like we got how did the group meet? I have, personally, the way this game is set up, I would if everybody's gonna play the same kin, I would just have them all coming from the same village. They're they're gonna go go out and explore and see uh see what they can find as far as you know supporting their families and and their village. We got a legend generator here. A long time ago, there was a who sought because of and traveled to located in some in the direction of as the legend goes it is said he she and that at the location there is our but also we got a monster generator <laughs> that's kind of funny size of the monster uh what type of creature is it could be a predator could be a gatherer could be a, a uh, scavenger Raising cattle. Uh, talking about limbs. And a head. Oh, it doesn't have a head. There we go. Does it have a tail? No. Does it have armor? What kind of movement? Where is it home? Skills. Traits. The harpy again. Cool. Monster attacks. Kind of giving out. You want to create your own monsters? Roll them up. See, now that's one of the things I, I, I really do like about uh, a lot of old school role playing games is, uh, you know, the, the monsters could be gonzo. You could they could be completely off the wall and uh, nobody would complain. And the thing is, you know, your your players would run into this stuff and they had no idea. But, you know, what does a rust monster do? You know, you weren't telling them it's a rust monster. You weren't telling them it's a carrion crawler. It's like, okay, you tell them what does it look like? And they're like, okay, well, I guess we're going to have to figure this thing out. Um, like dungeon delves and stuff like that. I, I'm always a big fan of um, any intelligent creatures that are down there. They have their own agendas. Uh, I don't believe they're just sitting around there waiting for the adventurers to come along and, and massacre them. And sometimes they may not even be... Uh, be looking for a fight they might be evil but they may not be looking for a fight all right so we got this uh this map here it's uh two sides it's uh i believe it's yep yeah, it's double-sided and it is uh it's the same exact map but i do believe it's dual-sided in case you played more than one campaign so uh i think that's kind of cool too and i do understand that uh, you can order more maps and stickers if you want. You can you can get those separately. Nice, nice, uh, pretty nice cartology on this. Cartography on this. Sweet, very cool. So we've got the stickers, we got the map, we got the Forbidden Lands, Legends and Adventurers book, we got the Game Master's Guide. And we've got the player's handbook. And that's what we find when we take everything outside the box for the Forbidden Lands box set, which is available from Free League by way of the good folks over at Modifius Entertainment. So, of course, I am going to have a review of... There we go. Messing around trying to get that uh, camera to change over. Uh, of course, I'm going to have a review of Forbidden Lands in the very near future. This looks really, really interesting. Uh, as I mentioned, I started kind of peeking at the PDFs. I didn't get really, really far yet, mainly because I've been working on 
getting through this so I can do my review on it. But uh, I am going to dig into this. So after the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, this is going to be the next RPG review. So uh, I may uh, I may actually be taking a read of this tonight. So anyway, I do want to point out that it is available right now. Forbidden Lands is available as the box set. Uh, combined between the two books, it's 472 pages or so. But I think all in all, it's about 500 pages of RPG goodness. Box set is uh, $49.99. Or as I mentioned before, if you go to the Free League website, it's $45.80. Or you can get the PDF. I believe it's three PDFs in the map image and stuff like that, all like in a zip file from Drive Through RPG in PDF, as I started to say before, for twenty four dollars and ninety nine cents. Pretty sweet. I think that's a pretty good deal. I personally, if if the game is as good as it's looking, that forty five dollars for those two books, that's kind of a steal. It really is. Uh, I would, I would see you spending more than that. I mean, just think. It's $49.95, folks. I'm not knocking D&D &D or Wizards of the Coast and their pricing because they don't come out with tons of stuff. If, if they came out with like five books a month and every one of them was $49.95, yeah, I'd have a little bit of an issue with that. But anyway, so stay tuned. I will have a uh, an in-depth review of forbidden lands in the very near future so that is it for today's show as i mentioned tomorrow's show i am going to delve into another new role-playing game release and take a peek at warhammer fantasy role play from my good pals over at cubicle 7 entertainment and uh as i always like to say when you're not watching videos on the gaming gang channel or kicking back with the daily dope please visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. Come on, by now you know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer. I will be back tomorrow, which is Wednesday. So until then, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday nights. And thank you very much for watching. Thanks again for watching The Daily Dope, presented by The Gaming Gang. If you like this episode, be sure to give it a quick thumbs up. And if you dig the channel, please subscribe. If you'd like to check out our previous episode, click right here. And if you want to check out a somewhat randomly selected episode, give a click right down here. It'll be like opening a box of Cracker Jacks. You just don't know what you'll get. Once again... Thanks for watching, and I'm Jeff McAleer.